Hey, hey, everybody. This is Captain Yeet here for you for another One Piece episode review. This is going to be episode 13, titled Terrifying Duo, the Meow Brothers versus Zoro. So, let's get into it. One Piece is on break, so, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> hey, you know me. I, mean, I, I try to keep my promises, but I, I've, I've been off and on. Every time One Piece is on break, I do one One Piece episode. I'm sorry from the very beginning, on episode 13 now. I'm supposed to do that every time it's on break. I haven't really been doing that a lot, but I'm going to start to do it more consistently because when One Piece goes on break, it's like a unique thing, really. So when it goes on break, I'm going to start to do these, these reviews more consistently because sometimes when it goes on break, I don't do it. Now, sometimes I got to do other stuff, but I haven't really been doing it, so I'm sorry about that. If anybody been, like, waiting for these reviews, which I doubt I haven't really seen any comments, like, yo, Captain E, where's the One Piece review? We're on break, but it's it's whatever. Anyway. This episode starts off with the theme song, or the opening. After the opening, we get a recap of last episode, and then we start off right where we left off, with Luffy and Zoro coming in, beating all the black cat pirates and pushing them back down the hill. And Jango looks pretty mad and scared, because if they're not on time, which they're not going to be on time, because they're already pretty late, because <laughs> last episode, Kuro was waiting for them, and they're already late, so now Kuro is walking towards the cliffside, like, wondering what the heck is going on, because they're already late. But he's like, you know, Kuro, not Kuro. Django, he's really scared. He goes, you know, if we're late, Kuro's going to kill us all. And all the other pirate crewmates know that too. So they're like, we got to hurry up and get past these guys. And then we get a really cool team side of Luffy and Zoro. What's up, and Ami are like, you know, suck that Luffy and Zoro were able to push all these pirates back just by themselves. And Usopp's like, wow, you guys are that strong? Luffy's like, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Nami's like, it took you long enough. Well, <laughs> he said, it took you long enough. Where were you guys? He has a really cool team shot. Obviously, Zoro is mad. He goes, what? You're the one that pushed me down that, you know, uh, not mud slide, the oil slide. What is wrong with you? She goes, well, it's better for both. I mean, better for one of us to get here instead of both of us being stuck down there. And besides, it was an accident. I slipped. I fell. I grabbed you. You fell. I got up. <laughs> Simple, like it was a simple accident. I didn't mean to. I didn't. Oh, yeah, my best. He said that first, and then she said, like, you know, it's better for one of us to get here than both of us to be stuck down there. And he goes, if one of us had to be stuck down there, it should have been you. <laughs> like, like, what? What are you doing? Let me put the towel back on the TV. So all the straw hats, well, just Luffy, all straw hats, Luffy, Zoro, and Nami, and Usopp, they're like talking to each other, trying to figure out what their next move. And Django's like, this isn't good. Kuro is going to be impatient and wonder, where is everybody? I need to get all my men back up now. So he pulls out his little disc, and he starts to hypnotize the whole group. He goes, on account of Django, all your wounds will be healed. You're going to become stronger than ever, even more stronger than that. You're going to keep getting stronger and stronger no matter what. Everybody's looking down at the hill like, what the heck is he doing? Why is everybody gathering in a circle? Nami's like, huh? Oh, so he's just trying to do some hit. I mean, he's just trying to do like some hypnotism. That junk is stupid. That never works. He counts to the count of Django, and the whole crew starts yelling and screaming. And obviously, Zoro's like, "What are they all riled up about?" One guy clenches his fist, punches the cliffside, and half of it falls down. Nami's like, "What? <laughs> that junk actually works? I thought hypnotism was just like stupid. It's like you know, just a money grab thing." That junk works? Zoro's like, that one guy just broke half the cliff. <laughs> Could you imagine the whole group? This is bad. And they start to run up the hill again. So Zoro goes, okay, you two, get out of here. Luffy, me and you gotta handle this. I don't know why, but I really, like, not laugh, but I smile. Because, like, obviously Zoro knows that him and Luffy are the heaviest hitters there. Usopp and Nami, they can't really help out in this kind of situation. It was kind of a cool sound when he said it, too, because he pulled out one of his swords. He's like, okay, Luffy. What's the plan? And Luffy, he doesn't move. And these guys are getting closer and closer. And he's like, you know, Luffy, like, what's the plan? What do you want to do, man? <laughs> like, what's going on? And Luffy just looks down. He's breathing. Then he starts yelling and screaming. It was a cool scene I was talking about where, you know, it's just him pulling out his sword. He's like, okay, Luffy, what's the plan? So Luffy, like I said, he looks down. He's breathing. Then he starts yelling and screaming. And his pupils are gone. Ami's like, don't tell me. He got hypnotized, too. And yeah, he did. He got hypnotized just like everybody else. He runs down the hill towards everybody, does gum gum gatling, and takes out 
the whole crew. And everybody's on their on the ground, like, you know, like, ah, jeez, like, that guy punched me like crazy. And Gangle's like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, Kuro, you made a mistake. These aren't just ordinary pirates. These guys are, these guys are something else. <laughs> we are in big, big trouble. What are we going to do? Let me get past all this because I just said all this. After that, Luffy, he, well, he stomps for a second. Then he starts to run back towards everybody. It was really funny because everybody was able to get back up after the Gatling. And then they look up at Luffy and he runs towards them. And they get scared and they run away from Luffy. And Luffy just runs past them. But <laughs> there's a funny scene where Luffy starts to run towards them. They're like, yo! <laughs> they just start to run away from Luffy. Luffy runs past all the pirates. Then he runs past Django. And everybody's like, where the heck is Luffy going? What is he doing? He runs over to the ship. And he grabs the mass of the... Well, not the mass. Because the mass is like the big... Like, what a, what a, not the flag, but you know what a big sail is. But he grabs the bottom of the ship where the figurehead is. Because, you know, this figurehead is at the top. There's like this long curved piece of wood that goes underneath the boat. He grabs that huge part where the figurehead is. And everybody's like, what is he doing? He starts yelling and screaming. His muscles get bigger. He's like gripping it. <laughs> He's gripping like the wood. And it's starting to come off of the ship. Usopp, Nami, like, yeah, Luffy, tear it down. You got this. Jango's like, you got to be kidding me. Eventually, he is able to rip it off the boat. And he has, like, this huge piece of wood plus the figurehead. And he's walking towards the group of pirates, well, the black cat pirates and Jango. The black pi the black cat pirates are freaking out. And they're running away. Jango's like, what am I going to do? Just standing here isn't going to do anything. Um, I got it. On the count of Jango, you're going to go to sleep. One, two, Django. Luffy's walking, walking, and he passes out. But when he passes out, obviously, he drops the huge figurehead piece of the ship, and it falls, well, a piece of it falls on all the crew, and Django's like, jeez. I mean, at least he's done. I mean, you know, at least Luffy, at least, at least the Straw Hat Kid is not moving anymore. At least he's passed down. But the crew, this is bad. <laughs> this is very, very bad. What am I going to do? There was one little cute detail when Luffy was grabbing on to the figurehead part of the ship and trying to rip it off, the figurehead part of the ship started sweating. You see a little sweat mark part. You see a little sweat mark pop up on the figurehead's face, which is pretty funny. You had Luffy trying to rip it off and getting bigger muscles. You see a little sweat mark part pop up. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Okay, so after he passes out, we cut to Usopp Pyrex, onion, apple, and carrot. Uh, onion, apple, and, I mean, onion and apple are trying to wake up Carrot to tell him, like, yo, Captain Usopp was acting kind of weird today. Something must be happening. He told us about pirates coming today. They haven't came yet. Maybe something's off. I don't know. And then Onion, he, I mean, not Onion, Carrot, he wakes up. He goes, it's kind of early for this. And they go, come on. You don't want Kaya to get hurt, do you? We got to go see what's going on. So they run over to the mansion, and the mansion looks fine, but Kaya's window is wide open. But they don't see Kaya or Usopp. They're like, come on, we got to get up there. How? They run over to the side where that little piece of fake grass was in the bush that Usopp used to always, like, pull out to go in. They try to pull out that little piece of grass. Well, well okay, it's not grass because it's in a bush. But like, that little piece of bush, you know, trying to, that fake piece of bush, they try to pull it, but it got stuck somehow. So they're like, okay, we're going to have to go around back. Come on, let's go. And the camera zooms inside of the house, and Kaya is in her room, even though the window's wide open, and she has a dream. Of Usopp standing over her with a sword, threatening her life. Like, you know, how dare you disobey me? How dare you make me look like a fool? You try to, I mean, I try to help you. And you didn't want to listen to me. And Kaya's like, you know, no, please, Usopp. And Usopp stabs her. But it's a dream. She wakes up. She's like, whew. Jeez. That, <laughs> that was wild. I'm, uh, I'm going to go get some water. So she walks out of her room, walks down the hallway, and then she finds Mary. And Mary's there bleeding on the floor because the night before, remember, uh, Clawador, Kuro, he put on his claw fingers and he just slashed uh, Mary right in the chest. Obviously, Kaya's freaking out like, Mary, you okay? What happened? Who did this? He's like, Clawador. She goes, no, no, there's no way. I'm like, okay. When Luke, when Usopp was saying, you know, Clawador's a pirate, this and that, okay, that's understandable. This guy's been your butler for like five plus years. Okay, maybe you're not going to believe Usopp instantly. You see... Your other butler that's been with you even longer. He's been with you even longer than Kuro. And he's bleeding on the floor. He said Kuro did this. I will start to think like, man, one person said that yesterday. I mean, okay, maybe still in, in disbelief, but 
it was just kind of funny like come on you still don't believe this <laughs> even now like you got one of your butlers that you knew even longer than Kuro well uh, Claudor bling on the floor saying it was Kuro you're not believing him Usopp okay maybe but two back to back to back like, like literally Usopp tried to do tell you about this guy the day before it wasn't like it wasn't like this is like weeks after this is a day before and then the very next morning boom <laughs> this happens come on anyway Mary I mean Us now what's up Kai is able to get Mary to like sit up on the wall Mary's bleeding out he's like you know holding his chest he tells her like no I'm telling you the truth it was it was Claudor all he wanted is your money and oh I was gonna say fame but all he really wants is your money He's been tricking us for years. I know it's a sad truth. What really makes it sad that Usopp, you know, just, you know, not nobody that, that a kind young boy that even wants some money, that been your friend for years, he was finding his hardest to tell us yesterday about him, about all the pirates. And we were just stuck up in our own ways that we didn't want to believe him no matter what. He was trying his hardest to save you, Miss Kai. And then we get like a few flashback scenes from last episode when Usopp would like grab Kai took her out the house, was telling Kai, like, come on, we need to go. You, you're going to understand all this tomorrow. And then Kai slapped him and told him to leave. And she starts crying. She goes, Kai, I mean, Mary goes, Kai, I know this is sudden. And this burden shouldn't be on you. But he wants your fortune. He wants your money. And all of these lives and all this money and house isn't worth all the lives are going to be lost, especially yours. Oh, he doesn't say especially yours. yours. He doesn't say especially yours. He's just, like, saying, like, you know, these pirates are going to kill everybody in the village. They're going to kill you, me. All this massacre isn't worth the money. You need to go just give him your money. Just give it to him. That's, that's what he wants. So just go give him your money. You're the only one that can stop him because all this blood set isn't worth it just for some money. And Kai's like, yeah, you're right. I'm going to go. And then we cut outside and the Usopp pirates are trying to like sneak into the mansion through the gate. And Kerry got his head stuck through the gate. Then the door opens in the mansion. They're like, yo, it's Miss Kaya. So they get out of the bars because they were like halfway through trying to sneak in. And Miss Kaya, well, Kaya has like a coat on. She's walking really slow, walking out towards where the cliffside is. And they're like, what the heck? Kaya, like, you know, the scene never comes outside and just going to walk. What is he doing? Let's follow her. Something's up. And then we cut back to Luffy and everybody. So that was like a huge chunk that I can just skip. <laughs> <laughs> that was a huge chunk. I can just skip in the episode because I've been an old noggin. Didn't even, didn't even need to look at the TV. I, I kept doing this, but you know, because the TV is right there. But that's kind of funny. After that, we get the eye catches for the episode, and it's exactly the same with the wanted poster and the, the theme in the background. It's funny because they used Zoro's theme twice, and they saw Zoro for the second time. Well, at first, it's Luffy, but you hear Zoro's theme. He hears Zoro's theme, and then Luffy wanted poster pop up. I'm like, that's not the right theme. Then it shows Zoro's theme again. Then Zoro's wanted poster pops up. Okay, that's Zoro. I'm like, why do they use this theme twice? They're using the wrong themes. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> They've done this a few times already. I don't know why they mixed it up. <laughs> I don't know why they've been mixing it up like crazy. Anyway, we cut back over to Luffy and everybody on the cliffside. Django's like, man, we are done. Crew is going to be mad. Everybody's like out for the count. Our ship is like broken apart. <laughs> this Straw Hat guy is ridiculous. And Nami and Usopp are kind of worried about Luffy because that huge piece of the mask fell on him. But Zoro's like, hey man, Luffy's fine. You don't need to worry about him. You got to worry about yourself. I really like this scene when he said that because he did like a really big smile when he said it because he knows Luffy. He's tougher than that. That's not going to hurt him or take him out. Plus, he's mad at a rubber. So that, so that didn't really even do anything to him. Like the big smile he did. He goes, Luffy's fine. You two need to worry about yourselves. You two look pretty banged up. So that was really nice. Anyway, now we get into the actual title of this episode. When Django's like, man, what are we going to do? We hear two voices off to the side. Django's like, huh? Oh, I forgot about our trump cards. Du uh, not Duan Brothers. What are their names again? They're so like forgettable. Oh, Meow Bomb Brothers come out. And then the two Meow Bomb Brothers come out. This is what they look like. One is super lanky with green hair. And the other one is really big. And he has like this weird like mask on that covers half his face. And these are what the Meow Brother look like. Look pretty ridiculous. <laughs> they they don't even look ridiculous. Anyway, Django tells them to attack Zoro, the swordsman. 
And they just look at Zoro and they get really scared. And they're like, no, boss, we can't attack him. He looks way stronger than us. We're going to get beat. And he goes, I don't care. Go attack him. And the lanky one starts, they have names, but I forget their names. <laughs> they start um, They start crying. And Nami's like, are these guys serious? That one is crying. Zoro can take these guys. Those are like, yeah, I guess I guess those aren't the trump cards they thought they were. So the lanky one starts to run towards Zoro. And he's like, you know, oh, I'm going to get you. Oh, like, you know, just acting like a kid. And when he gets like, somewhat close to him like i guess they were like this far away and one is running through the lanky one's running towards zoro when he gets like this close he goes huh so i was like what and he jumps towards him and zoro is able to block his attack they both have these claw things on just like kuro not the blades aren't as long as kuro but they have the same sort of weapons so he slices at zoro he blocks it with his one of his swords and he goes ah you fell for my trick but you're still able to block me not bad then he jumps back and so I was like, what the? And he looks down at his side, and the lanky one took two of his swords. So I was like, give those back. He goes, why? You had three. You're so greedy. He said, goodbye, swords. He grabs both his swords off his back. Well, he, you know, because the lanky one had both his old swords, so he grabs both the swords, throws them to the side, and they land on the ground. As soon as that happens, Zoro gets pretty mad. He runs towards them. Zoro does a slash on his side. Then he goes to grab his two swords. Then the lanky one jumps on Zoro's back grabs his arms and like leaned them back this way and he falls on the ground then he calls his big brother to come in he jumps sky high and he's gonna land right on his noggin so i was like dog what so he's able to like get the lanky one off of him roll to the side and the fat one lands on the ground he goes ah what is your problem you're supposed to hold him tighter so i can land on him well he's strong stronger than i thought come on let's just get this guy so i was like jeez I need to be careful. <laughs> if that tubby one wouldn't have landed on me, I would have been dust. <laughs> I would have been done. This is bad. <laughs> like these guys aren't no joke. They're actually pretty decent. So they both jump up at Zoro and start to claw at him. And he's blocking with one sword. And he even says like, you know, usually fighting with one sword isn't really my forte, but I guess it's going to have to do. So he's blocking both of their attacks because they're rapidly attacking him. And Usopp brings out his slingshot and he starts to aim. And Nami's like, what are you doing? He goes, I can't just let Zoro fight these two guys by himself. He's going to get nowhere if he's on the defensive. Like, I mean, he's not going to get anywhere. If he, yeah, well, yeah, that's what he said. I don't know why <laughs> I rewinded that. That's exactly what he said. He's like, he's not going to gain any ground if he's always on the defensive, just blocking his attack. I'm going to suit one of them to get them disoriented so he can slash them. So he suits his slingshot. Zoro moves to the side, and his slingshot attack hits him in the back. And when he goes like, ah... Both of the Meow brothers jumps up and they both do a slash attack and do like an X slash on Zoro's chest and he really starts to hurt. Nami's like, what are you doing? Like, what the heck did you hit Zoro? He goes, I didn't. I mean, I did, but I could have sworn I was going to hit one of the brothers. He must have moved in the way for some reason. Zoro goes, stop. Don't interfere with this fight. You two just need to heal up. And Nami and Usa realize like, oh, you know, actually Zoro's kind of smart. If one of, I mean, if you did hit one of those brothers, they probably would have went after you. And since he doesn't have all three of his swords, he couldn't protect us. He's actually a pretty nice guy. He wants them both to focus on him so they don't come and attack us because they're actually pretty decent. Wow. Zoro's a nice guy. I mean, of course he is. I mean, he hasn't really done anything to not be a nice guy. But still, that, that, was, a, that was a nice moment. <laughs> that, that was a really nice moment. Anyway... Um, Nami says, I'm going to go get both of Zoro's swords. Don't worry. So she gets really close to them. And then Django pulls out that like spinning, like that circle disc he always uses to hypnotize people. He grabs it out and he cuts Nami's shoulder pretty bad and she falls down. And he goes, why do you even need those swords, huh? He looks up and then you see, it was kind of funny because when he looks up, you can see the reflection of Kuro in his um, glasses. And when you see that, he starts freaking out. He's like, oh my goodness. And then we just see a couple of random shots of all of the crew. But so you see like the reflection of Kuro. And everybody like starts freaking out like, oh my goodness. <laughs> all the pirates that Luffy beat start to get back up. They freak out. Django, he's freaking out like, I, 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 I can explain this. I can explain this. The Meow Brothers, they stop fighting Zoro. They like back up from him. And they like, yo, boss. And Zoro stops fighting. He's like, what? What's going on? He looks up. He goes, uh. Oh. It's the main man, like, you know, it's the boss. Luffy, he's still asleep. Kuro, all he really says, like, you know, why were you guys late? And he looks at, like, all the chaos. What the heck is happening? And then we get the credits. So, that's the, 
into this episode. And then we only have like two to three episodes left of this whole situation. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, four. Yeah, we got like four episodes left of this whole situation. So, yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, we're only doing this when One Piece goes on break, so it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a while. But, you know, One Piece, it goes on break halfway through December.